Welcome back to another episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker and author of the book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. Want to know what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, you came to the right place. Whether you're already an entrepreneur, are looking to start your journey tomorrow, or just someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. This is the place where you will learn exactly what it's like in the world of entrepreneurship and hear authentic stories of entrepreneurs grinding on each episode. My goal for this podcast is to help you realize that giving up is never an option. If you missed the last episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. Before I introduce my guest, I'll share another entrepreneurial story to inspire you all. I will now introduce the story of Brian Chesky. I learned in the article that Brian Chesky, who's the co-founder of Airbnb, was not the typical Silicon Valley entrepreneur. He was not a coder, but rather a graduate from the Rhode Island School of Design, where he graduated with a degree in industrial design. His education did make some Valley investors skeptical at first of his background, but Brian does credit the school to be a great producer of entrepreneurs because they foster creativity. In the article, he shared a fascination that he's had ever since he was a child, where he was redesigning everything from toys to tennis shoes, and that drive was the cure for this problem-solving app in Airbnb, which has definitely redesigned the way that we travel. Hey, Jordan, what would you like best about his story? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really interesting that like he has been fixing things or redesigning things from basically his whole life. Uh, I, I think that's something a lot of entrepreneurs have in common, uh, just this this thing that they've been doing their entire life, and then they just finally get to a point where they do it at scale. So I think that's really, really cool to see. Yeah, I love the way you said that's kind of it's within our roots. That's why I like this story, because it kind of taught us a little bit about his background and his motivation, I guess, for the app. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah, I think what they're doing is great. So yeah, I certainly love it. But that voice you just heard is the sound of today's guest. My guest on the show today is someone I met through networking, of course. One of my first guests on the show had passed me a referral, who in turn gave me one as well. And today's guest has been in the entrepreneurial world ever since he graduated college and before. And his latest adventure is Yak. Yak is an auto-first messaging platform that helps you talk faster and build stronger relationships within your remote team. Its early beta users include Google, Envision, Salesforce, HubSpot, and more. And this company has already raised 1.5 million seed round in 2019, led by Active Cap Capital, excuse me, with participation from Betaworks Ventures, and they were also the winner of the Product Hunt Makers Festival 2018. Yak has already been featured in the Wall Street Journal, TechCrunch, and Yahoo Finance, so I had to get the founder on the show. Allow me to now introduce Jordan Walker. Jordan, thanks for coming on my show. Yeah, man. I'm super excited to do this. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, th thank you for saying all those nice things about me. Yeah, it's been a crazy journey up to this point so far, but we're cooking and moving right along. Absolutely, Jordan. Will you please introduce yourself to our listeners and preview your story a bit without giving too much away on your entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of backstory to get into, but I'll just focus on the act story right yeah, now. Yeah, dive in. So uh, a couple years ago, um, we, there was Product Hunt uh, had a Makers Festival. And for those of you who are in the tech world who don't know what Product Hunt is, you should definitely know what it is. It's where when you launch a product, um, you post it on there, and anybody who's everybody in the tech world pays attention to it. Um, and they had this online hackathon uh, over Thanksgiving break a couple of years ago. Um, and they're just like, hey, make some, like, we're going to have a competition to see who can make the coolest idea. Um, and uh, we'll pick a winner. And we're like, you know what? It's Thanksgiving break. We're bored. Why not? So we built a really scrappy version of Yeah. Didn't think anything of it. Really, really scrappy. I mean, put it together in four days. Design, logo, developed in four days. Um, and then long story short, and we'll dive into the details later, uh, but it just got a ton of traction. It got to the point after we launched it, we ended up winning. It got a download a minute for a couple of days. Like it was just going wow. absolutely nuts. Um, yeah, and that was, that was in November. And then uh, January comes around. Um, and one of the users of Yak, Aiden Wolf, had mentioned our now investor, uh, Adam Draper from Boost DC on Twitter. and was like, hey, check out what the Yak guys are doing. Um, Adam DM, my co-founder, his cell phone number within five minutes. We got on a call with him. He funded us. Um, and we have just been rocking ever since. So it's been a crazy couple of years. 
Yeah, it sounds like it. Well, congratulations on the early success. and I'm excited to see how far you take it. But now, Jordan, it's time for the Big Five. On each episode, my guest and I will go over these five questions to help you, the listeners, learn what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. Are you ready to go? Yeah, man. Let's do it. Let's hop in. Great. When did you realize that you either weren't happy with what you were doing, or maybe you just needed some kind of change to truly start this entrepreneurial journey? Yeah. So, I mean, I think really from being even just a little kid, I've always had entrepreneurial tendencies. So it's a great story. My mom tells it the best. But when I was in first grade, I was uh, out on the golf course trying to sell beer to the golfers because I realized the golfers wanted beer, not lemonade. Um, so yeah, they were buying beer from a, I don't know how you are in first grade, but whatever. I was in first grade. Uh, and one day my mom caught me and quickly shut down that operation. So, um, but I, I say that to say, like, I think uh, I was just always born with entrepreneurial tendencies, but I think it really got kickstarted. Uh, so in college, um, prior to Yak, we have a design agency that still exists called So Friendly, but So Friendly was started in college. Um, and while trying to build So Friendly, I also was working at Winn-Dixie, uh, stocking shelves Grinded. Uh, my freshman year. And doing that, I, I really hated it, to be honest. And that was definitely like the, the, the push I needed to be like, all right, this is not for me. And I'm going all in on building my own thing. Um, so yeah, I, I think my freshman year of college was definitely like the turning point for me. It's funny you said that. When I was interning at Northwestern Mutual during my sophomore year, I was also working at a local Sweet Bay grocery store, stocking the shelves on the, the graveyard shift, they called it, the yep. 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., go home, shower, get to the internship, and then once that's done, sleep and then do it again. Yep, literally the same for me. Yeah, I would start these shifts super late and work literally all night, and I'm just like, this is the worst experience of my life. Yeah, I met some people that do it, though, but it wasn't, wasn't for me. And, uh, yeah, that's when I knew. I'm like, all right. We're going all in on, at the time it was so friendly. We're going all in on, on so friendly. Yeah, it, it played its role for sure for me. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, sometimes you need to create money, create revenue to get, get going. So sometimes part-time jobs are the way to do that. But it was certainly one that taught me some lessons, but I'm grateful for not doing it right yeah. now. So I get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%, man, 100%. But once you got that wake-up call, Jordan, now that you've been on the path for a little bit, what are one or two of the most difficult parts of being an entrepreneur? Um, I think, oh man, that's a great question. I, I think one just in general is kind of figuring out where to go next, especially in the early days, because there's no like guidebook or like blueprint that says like, all right, do X, Y, and Z next. You just <laughs> kind of have to figure it out, you know, as you go, because each, you know, product or startup that's being built is kind of like a case by case thing. So I think one is just figuring out where to go next can be, difficult at times it's like yeah. you spend more time in development more time in marketing sales whatever um so figuring out where to go next um and then two um i think it's just uh, for me at least it's just getting to understand and, and manage people so I, I love our team to death i'm more so talking about client or like customer facing right. and just really wanting to deal with those people and kind of knowing that like like there's no, there's no one else that you can like really pass them to. If you have like a diff difficult person you're working with, it's like, you're the, you're the person that's you're the guy, yeah. and you got, and you kind of got to fix it and, and, and all that's on your shoulders. Um, so I think those have been the two toughest challenges, but I think that's just kind of what comes with being an entrepreneur is that these are things that currently have to deal with, um, and kind of figure out. Yeah. So. It's kind of day by day. You learn something new pretty much every day. And, a lot of failures come along with being an entrepreneur, but that's the way you learn and you're scared yeah, of failures. And, and, it's not I mean, the business. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And just like add on to that, you know, obviously there have been some failures and I think though those failures, it sounds so cliche, but like those fa failures are what do like set you up for success or like the next thing, because you know, all right, well, I'm not going to do that again. Or I know how to like approach the situation differently. Or, you know, if I see gold at the end of the rainbow, maybe I don't need to jump immediately. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it definitely makes you more seasoned and a little more experienced, which just continues to help you as you move along. Yeah, well, of all those failures, what is one of your greatest failures or lessons learned and what, it, what did it teach you? Why is it stuck with you all the way to today? Man, yeah, so I don't want to get into the, into the details and put anybody on blast, but there have definitely been some projects where uh, on so friendly side, so for, so 
context, so friendly is our, our product design agency where we build like mobile apps, websites, custom development jobs for other people. Um, and we definitely had a, a couple projects where we kind of saw the gold at the end of the rainbow and saw some big names and to be honest, uh, a big check at the end of it. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Which is cool, but in retrospect, doing the project, we're like, man, we hated that you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, put a lot of strain on myself, uh, my partner in the company, uh, our employees. It just really kind of like demoralized us, to be honest. Um, uh, one week link, you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, It happens. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. It, it got to the point where we uh, just finally had to say, like, look, we're just straight up unhappy doing this. We, we got to get out. Um, and so we ended up doing that. But the, the lesson there, like the failure is that, like, we just saw like, you know, the, the big opportunity, like, oh man, we got to go for it. When in fact, it was probably, probably worse for us to be honest, like, cool, like, yeah, sure. We got paid from it. We got to put a, a big name on the website or whatever. But it was like, man, we didn't have fun doing that. Like, we don't like this anymore. Or like, everybody kind of like hated working on the project. Like, it was really stressful. Uh, I mean, there was one week where, I'm, no joke, I was working um, from like 5 a.m. to like midnight on it. Um, yeah. there was one night where my, uh, co-founder Justin, he like stayed overnight there, like just absolutely crazy stuff that like Madness. Was really hurting our health. Um, and just like our happiness. So yeah, learning to be able to cut that off, I think is really strong, but I think that was one of our, our biggest failures, if you will. I like the way you put that because that you have to find ways to keep moving forward or your entrepreneurial endeavors are no longer there. And that's a severe roadblock having someone when you're so close to the prize at the end of the road, standing in the way. Yeah. And a hundred percent. And also like what's cool, even though it was a failure, it actually ended up being good. So uh, around this time when this project was winding down uh, is when Yak started to get spun up. So Yak was spun out of our design agency. Um, but it was cool because since we had gone through that now with all the craziness that Yak is, you know, just, and all the people we've encountered so far, we've been able to handle things and kind of see things from, you know, a hundred miles out this time and go, Oh man, you know, we should avoid that or we shouldn't do that or we should do this. So it's weird how these, these failures kind of set you up for the next thing and you can like come back and bounce back from it. That's it because you got, you got to keep learning how to be better every day and you never know where that golden nugget's going to come from, from that particular day. That yeah, learning exactly. Lesson. It's really funny you say that because literally it was, it was exactly that for us. I mean, in the moment we hated it and we're like, man, you know, I just hope, I hope there's some lesson here. And even both my parents told me the same thing. Like, you know, Jordan, it, this is going to work out in your favor somehow, right? Um, and then now here, here we are with Yak. Um, I mean, literally even just yesterday, like Twitter signed up for Yak. So like just how far we've come, it's been absolutely nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. You never really see the light at the end of the tunnel right then and there. But if you just stay focused and believe in your mission, believe in yourself, you believed in yourself for a reason, I feel. So it will unravel. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, now you're working your way in this entrepreneurial world. Who would you choose to have a conversation from any entrepreneur, dead or alive? Who is it? Paint the picture for us. Oh, man. Uh, so I love this question. I think there's two people I'd love to talk Let's to. Let's hear him. Let's hear him. Life. It would be uh, Jack Dorsey, uh, Square and Twitter, um, and then also Kanye. Uh, I really look up to both. Um, Jack, I, I really look up to because I think he's just, he's got a really good head on his shoulders. Um, he's very calm in stressful situations he's well and he just sees like a million years into the future he's not one of those people who's just making here and now decisions he's able to really play play the long game and also just his attention to like people's privacy safety actual concern for like the public good i, I think is really cool uh, versus some other folks out there right, right. Um, so in that regard i just really respect him and look up to him. And also I have a couple of friends who like have worked at Twitter and they all just say like absolutely great things about him. Um, so, so that's really cool to me. Um, and then I also really look up to Kanye and in that like just his creative ability is absolutely insane. And I think as an entrepreneur, you inherently need some sort of creativity to yourself. Right. And so I, I think Kanye has really nailed that. And then um, whether you love him or hate him for it, it's kind of controversial, but Kanye is also just nailed down like, not caring what other people think he's just himself and especially being a founder and entrepreneur 
you kind of have to have that mentality too. Like you can't really care or listen to like what other people think. You just kind of have to do your thing and, and keep moving forward. Yeah, um, you're, you're right. You're right. hundred percent. So yeah, those two people, if I, if I could talk with anybody, I would love to sit down with each of them for like an hour and just, and talk. Yeah. And the creativity thing is something you need as an entrepreneur. One of my weaknesses I've been working towards becoming a strength is the artistic and creative ability, but with creating content at the very minimum for your brand and things, you have to come up with new things and you always need new, I always need new ways to get inspired, get creative. So he's definitely a resource. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I love it just because the way he thinks of the world is so different. And then also like he, he's involved in so many different things, right? He's involved in like his brand easy. Now there's music. Um, he's also done some like, uh, relief stuff to make like you know just people better as a whole and so that's really important too i guess also i think it's important as an entrepreneur to stay kind of grounded in your roots too because i have also have seen some people kind of get like lost lost in the sauce if you will of course um, but i i think it's really cool to see people who have like intentionally try to keep themselves level and grounded or like recognize when there's a problem and they're able to reconcile it and, yeah. I, and I obviously i think kanye did that um I think it's just really cool to see that he was strong enough to say like, Hey, like I, I screwed up. I was in a dark place. Now I, I kind of want to fix it. So that's cool to me. Yeah. I mean, I no opinion really on Kanye. Love his older music, but the way he goes about himself is reminds me of a quote I heard once when I was first started being an entrepreneur is if you want to make everybody happy, just be an ice cream man. Yeah, exactly. I, I, there's a, I, I saw it on Twitter. Um, one of our investors posted like something that's important in building brand is like you have to be polarizing in, in one direction or the other. Like, <clears throat> or like nobody ever built like a, a, a whatever, like a, a huge empire sitting, sitting on the fence. You got to either be hot or super cold. So, and I so. went for a long time. I tried to, you know, because money wasn't really generating the way I anticipated having financial advising and real estate, juggling so many hats, but it was really just deterring me from full time building my brand, which is already, you know, a big project, right? It's yeah. going to take a long time, but I loved how you valued the philanthropist views. And I think it's important to stay humble. Part of my business is yep. obviously the philanthropic views. It's something I've done my whole life, volunteering, giving back to the community. And now I just get the great opportunity to work with more brain patient victims and the hospitals more directly and the students. So those are just things that, I'm grateful that I'm so passionate about because it also is my business. Yeah, no, man, that's incredible. It's super cool to see that like you're able to like live out your passion and like build around that. Like I think that's something a lot of people also underestimate. Like just build something that like is really near and dear to your heart. So like it's super cool to see you doing that. I appreciate the kind words. I mean, it's just something that I have the degrees, I have the ability to be employed in different positions, but when I get this project to where I want it to be, the brand that has the podcasts to help people, the books to help people, and then I do my speaking engagements and some coaching, that's something I'm definitely going to be proud of. 100%, man. Yeah, keep, keep killing it, man. You are, you're crushing it out there, so that's cool to see. Yeah, likewise, man. It's great to have you on the show because you've been talking about so much great stuff. But where do you see yourself and your entrepreneurial endeavors in the future? We're going to do one year and five years here, Jordan. You got a lot going on now. What are we seeing in one year? Yeah, so where we see ourselves in the next year um, is Yak evolving from just like voice messaging to like the voice collaboration platform. So it'll be able to integrate with all your tools that you normally use, uh, like Slack, Jira, Asana, um, and all these other cool products out there. And so integrations will be really big, uh, groups, transcription, um, what we're calling insights. You'll be able to like see like a wrap up of your team's messages from the week. So all that's really cool. So we see ourselves being not just kind of like a one trick pony, but like the, the hub uh, of like voice messaging, kind of like Slack is for chat right now. Yeah, I'm looking uh, forward so to that's that. Where we, where we see ourselves um, in the immediate next year is adding in all these cool features. Um, and then in the next five years, we're really excited to just be focused on what, he, what we have built. And at that point, hopefully the voice collaboration platform. Um, and from there, just continuing to onboard new enterprise customers or even, you know, really in any customers at that point and continue to, to build up the product um, and kind of go from there. It's really interesting because I think voice is at a really, is at a really critical point right now where people are just right. starting to get familiar with using voice like Google Home, 
Alexa are becoming more popular, things like that. And so I think people are kind of rediscovering like, oh man, using my voice is really powerful. And I'm really excited to see like what that looks like in five years, especially for Yak. Like do we, at that point, you know, do we have an integration with like Google Home or Alexa um, or, you know, even something crazy like Bose had pitched to us. Um, They have these augmented reality glasses um, with, like a microphone and earbuds built in. And so like, yeah, so you can say like, hey, Bose frames, check my yaks for the day. And it'll like send you all your yaks like while you're wearing the sunglasses or whatever. So like crazy stuff like that, I think is where yak will be headed in five years. It'll just be like supplementing um, what people are to do in their day-to-day life. Or like even AirPods too. I, I think AirPods will eventually become a platform that we build on top of. Um, and the yak will just be like a part of, a part of that flow. I love the ambition, man. I love the drive. I think all that's crazy. And I think you're still at the pioneer of the chart in this industry where you're definitely not a laggard and you have the opportunity to be with all these already huge products. So definitely going to have to check in with you for another episode down the road. But thanks so much, Jordan, for coming on. I know our listeners will see all the value in our show today. I enjoyed how you started the episode, sharing those entrepreneurial roots, how you were selling beer at the golf course. You (laughs) knew they didn't want lemonade. And you got real with the failure story because I think that's real important for people to hear because this is a problem that comes through in a lot of businesses where there's either an uh, employee that's not fitting the company culture anymore or a product piece that needs to be tweaked and it's a significant change, but you have to find a way to battle through the storm because look how far it's taken you where you did believe in your mission. You didn't steer off track. Yeah, 100%, man, 100%. And I appreciate you saying all of that. So. Um, uh, yeah, and also super stoked that I was able to hop on. Uh, appreciate the invite for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, no, well, right now it's time for the last word, Jordan. Is there something you want to share with our listeners today that we did not get to touch on yet? I mean, I, I guess the way I like to end a lot of podcasts that I do is just kind of like sharing one piece of advice. And my parents have given this to me uh, literally forever. Um, and, and the statement is, uh, make sure you take the time to like invest in like the little details or the little things about people. Um, and and basically what that means is like, take the time to like really get to know somebody. Don't just like take them for like face value, but get to know like, what's their favorite sports team? What's their favorite drink? Get to like, you know, what's their background? What music are they into? What are they, how are they as a person? And just take that time to like really sit down and like get to know somebody just because like it's super important. I feel like, especially now we're kind of at a point in in life and time where people are just like connect and move on and, and that's it and nobody really builds these relationships or like knows what somebody's going through so just take the time to like invest in people um and also in return that's how you that's how you get the most out of them like when when you put time into some time and effort into somebody they're willing to give that back to you and i think that's just something that people forget a lot i think you hit it right on the head man that's awesome advice thank you so much for sharing that would you please share your social media your websites and your ways for our listeners to follow these endeavors, use your services. Yep. So on social media, uh, I am at Jordan L Walker with three R's at the end. Um, and then you can find yak at, at yak chat at Y A C C H A T. Um, and then our website is just, we just got it the other day actually, uh, is www.yak.com Y A C.com. Um, and you can find us there. I'm glad you got that, uh, domain. Pretty, people have these crazy yeah, domains. Yeah, it was a crazy story to get it, but we, we got it. So I'm super stoked on it. I'm sure you did. Well, thanks for sharing all that. Be sure to check out Jordan and his endeavors on social media and his websites. But be sure to check out the show on Instagram and Facebook at your favorite morning podcast and on Twitter at Podcasts by Lancy. My handles are at Vincent A. Lancy on all social media and YouTube. And my website is VincentALancy.com. Be sure to check out my book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption on Amazon Now but DM me or email me. I want to hear what you think. If you enjoyed today's episode, please continue listening and rate what it's really like to be an entrepreneur five stars. I work hard to find value delivering stories for you on each episode. And as always, I will end the show and follow the last word with a quote that inspired me and know it will for you too. This one's from Leonardo DiCaprio. He said, if you can do what you do best and be happy, you are further along in life than most people. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur.